two ways to have the tallest building in town. Right? Everybody's heard this. Two ways to have the tallest building in town. You could build the tallest building, or you could tear all the other buildings down. It doesn't matter. You have a little two-story building, but as long as everybody else is flat and level, you're the big dog on campus. You're right. Today, we got drama. <laughs> I'm gonna let some people come in and uh, get situated, and then I'm gonna start <clears throat> Jimmy Jammin. What's up, gang? How are you living? Watch today. Today, watch, I guarantee you on this live, we'll have more people tune in than anybody ever tunes into any live. <laughs> watch. As soon as there's some drama involved, everybody want to know what is good. <laughs> hey, I ain't knocking y'all for real. Like, seriously, come, come in, sit down, get the truth. Um, in the end, I'm gonna let you guys know this much. Well, let me go ahead and let it, let me, let me just give it like three minutes. And then you guys can tell me what's up with you and how you live in the day. Like I said, obviously, um, I mean, I'm fine. You know what I mean? I'm fine. I appreciate everybody who's reaching out to me and showing me love and like, um, you know, just support, you know, no matter what. Um, I really appreciate that. You know, I think that that's a, a, a true show of a lot of you guys and like you said, your support or, you know, whatever. Um, it's easy to support when everything's great, but when somebody's really going through it or you have reasons to doubt somebody or something and you stick with them, that's always amazing. So I appreciate you guys in that. Um, oh, you writing? Dude, I am trying to get to writing so bad. I'm trying to write this book. And so I'm really trying to get down to the nitty gritty with that. So we're gonna, we're gonna make it happen here soon. So, uh, I mean, already we're about to, to in, like reach a number that I usually don't see in my lives. So, <laughs> um, the, the, uh, it holds true, you know, and, and I hope that we all realize that we're all very much, um, tuned into drama. Like it's something that's kind of indicative of the human nature. If there's a loud noise or a fight or anything, you're just, you're going to look, you want to know what's going on. I am no better. <laughs> so I'm not sitting here like no judgment on anybody. I actually appreciate y'all coming and giving me an opportunity to kind of explain the situation. Now, with that being said though, I'm not actually going to explain this this situation. Uh, after thinking about it a little bit this morning and, and really just trying to process a little bit what was going on, I started thinking and I said, look, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, it's just absolute ludicrous. And if I were to sit here and try to, like, I hope to have a very long career, you know, and I, and I hope to ascend to a place where I actually do have influence. You know, I was called an influencer and I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, I would say that, but I mean, I don't really have a platform, you know, <laughs> like, let's be honest. So I hope to build that one day. And so I know that throughout my career, anytime somebody who's going to live in the spotlight, if you will, or have the light shine on them and what they're doing, you're always opening yourself up to the possibility of people wanting to oppose you. You know, I told, I've talked about this in the past, like every person has ops out here, right? We're all facing some form of opposition, whether your opposition is the government or left-wing Democrats or your mother <laughs> or your bitter ex, whatever it is, somebody out here or some group of people or whatever, are always going to try to take up the cause anti your cause, you know? So, um, I realized that through that, like this is the first time this has ever happened to me, uh, like ever. I've never really had anybody try to go after my character, you know, and, and especially my character, uh, just because for obvious reasons. I mean, look at how much work I put into being an, a, an integral, uh, a person of high character, right? I put so much work into that. So the idea of somebody trying to go after that is, is, is crazy. But my point being, it's just never happened to me. It's not, it's not crazy, but it's just never happened to me. So, uh, so it's something new, but through this experience, I realized I cannot defend myself or try to defend myself every time somebody says some ludicrous shit about me on the internet, right? Especially if I plan on being around for a while. So like I said, I plan on doing this for a good long while and we've only scratched the absolute surface of where I'm trying to go. So when I have a million followers or 10 million followers or, you know, you're out here, I'm on Joe Rogan's podcast, then you can only assume how many people out here are going to want to take some weird jab at me. He's an alien. He's not from this world. He's a pedophile. He's um, in cahoots. He's eating babies. You know, like there's all types of 
allegations that get thrown around at people and that's just life, you know, that's just life. So I'm not gonna actually spend this time defending this particular accusation. So if that's what you came for, I'm sorry. Uh, there's just really nothing to say, okay? <laughs> like, um, it just is what it is. If you look at the situation, you know what it is. Um, I don't want to, that, that's the reason why I feel like I can't talk about it because there's no real way for me to talk about it without kind of doing the same thing to that person, kind of, saying things that are against them, you know? And so I'm just not really like that. I'm not a fighter. You guys know that. I don't, it's just not important to me. So um, I'm just gonna let it go. You know, I'm just gonna let it go and I hope you guys do too. But I do want to talk a little bit about this situation in general because I'm not the only person that this has ever happened to, okay? Um, I'm not the only person who's ever fallen under some type of allegation, whether true or false or whatever, but this happens a lot. And I talk to a lot of people um, in today's age and they say, how do you do what you do? And, and I wish that I could be as open and free with my opinions and my ideas and all this stuff as you are, but a lot of us are afraid of this. If I come out and I say something or if I do something and other people misconstrue it or disagree or whatever they're gonna do, that they're going to publicly try to defame me or take my job or fuck me up in some way. And this is called we all know what this is called because this happens like at an alarming rate right now in our society. This is called cancel culture, right? This is, uh, let's get this dude canceled, right? And everybody's afraid of that as we rightfully should be. I mean, it's very malicious. <laughs> it's very toxic. And sometimes, I mean, the intention can be pure sometimes. You know, when we deem something or somebody as a threat or as a bad person or somehow morally unjust or whatever, uh, based on our perspective, we feel the need to fight up against that or something like that. So, I mean, the intentions are good, right? It's like, and I've talked about this in my podcast, so if you're ever interested, go check out the Tie Dye podcast. I believe the episode where I talk about this is out, but if it's not, um, stay tuned, it's coming. But we've talked about it at length about this idea of cancel culture and, oh, actually, no, it's not out because this was the last one that we just filmed. That's why I'm remembering. Just filmed an episode, so funny, the universe is so weird. Just filmed the episode of this a couple days ago about cancel culture and its kind of role in our society and stuff and if it's a good or a bad thing or useful or whatnot. And so, and in that, my buddy John Allen, he brings up a good point. He says, well, what if you actually see some fuck shit? Are you not supposed to call it out? And I say, absolutely, call out corruption when you see it, right? When you know something's fucked and you see that it's fucked, call it out. But I always encourage you to call that out to that person. Right? Or to the people that can effectively do something about it. In this podcast, I say, look, if you realize that so-and-so is a racist and he's working at this place or whatever and on his Facebook he's being extremely racist and you feel the need to call up that person's boss and bring that to their attention, then by all means, you should. I mean, of course, right? If they're doing some fuck shit, call it out, right? But if you feel like once you've done that or whatever, you see this and you're like, hey, this is a problem and that person's like, they, they, they say, oh, thank you for your recommendation. They look into it and they decide that nothing is amiss here or that they don't want to do something about it. Well, then you taking it on as your personal vendetta against these people and say, well, no, 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 trust me, there's some fuck shit going on. Hey, everybody, everybody, pay attention. There's some fuck shit going on over here. And I would like all of us to essentially publicly lynch this person, right? Like, um... We're not going to take this to any kind of court or anything, and we're not going to like demand proof or evidence or anything like that. We're just going to um, sensationalize everybody and get them to lynch somebody or something. And I think that that's where it becomes malicious intent. You know, if you really are exposing something that is corrupt and you can prove it and you see it or whatever, and you want to bring light on it, so be it. But if you're just doing it because you feel like so and so should get tore down because you heard something about something or one, you know what I mean? Like if you have an opinion over somebody and, and that's a, a an opinion and then you want to tear them down for that, I think that that is very malicious and very toxic. So um, this is kind of the situation. And why, do, like I said, how do I want to talk about this? A lot of us don't have platforms. You know, a lot of you guys aren't really trying to build a, a fame for yourself or don't want to be known for anything or anything type of stuff like that. So how does cancer culture play? Well, it plays in everything. I mean, when this whole thing went down with George Floyd, I spoke out on my Instagram and I said, look, if you 
don't agree, or don't, even if you do agree, but you don't want to say anything, that's well within your right. It's not, you're not aligning with an oppressor just because you choose to keep your mouth shut. That was the stance that I took. And immediately I had somebody come online and try and post me and say, this guy thinks it's okay to be quiet. Which I do. I do think it's okay to be quiet. You know, I was like, I think that's well within your right to just shut the fuck up, especially if you're not knowledgeable on something like this or the situations. I don't think it's wise to encourage every single person to vomit an opinion on something, even, even if they don't know anything about it or something. And if they don't do that, then to call them somehow bad or corrupt. And so this is the stance that I took. I feel like it's a very logical stance. I mean, I'm not like, like I said, again, promoting oppression. I'm obviously, I don't want to be oppressed. I'm black, you know, I'm not racist, like any of these things. But I think that that's, uh, you know, everybody's right. And this person was like trying to shout me out as in like to, to try and um, incite the mob against me, right? Like as in like, hey, we got another one over here, come get him. And everybody's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they run that way, right? So I just, I just responded, and, and ultimately this is what I'm trying to get to. How do we respond to these types of situations? Because I gotta be a perfect example here. I mean, I gotta be a perfect example here. It can happen to anybody. I got 2,000 followers. I'm not even doing anything. Literally not even doing anything. And it's happening to me. So this happens to us. And how do you respond, right? A lot of us have responded by shutting up, right? We don't say what we believe or we don't say what we think or we are afraid to voice our opinions or our ideas. Um, whether that be like, yo, I'm for lower taxes or something or whatever type of thing that you stand up for, you feel like I probably shouldn't say this because if I do, somebody's going to come against me. Um, and, uh, and I want to be a, a, a word of wisdom here, okay, and a word of advice. And like I said, one that I'm trying to take myself, and that is anytime you're trying to do anything of note, period, anything, if you're trying to take up any type of cause, even if it's a worthy cause, some people out here are fighting for the end of institutional racism. And what do they get? Opposition from the racists. Okay, so it's like, whatever. If you're trying to stand up for mental health, right? Anybody who's, or if, like for me, for example, I'm trying to stand up for personal responsibility and the like no need for other people to come and govern you or whatever, right? Well, the government's not gonna like that. You know, if I'm sitting here saying, oh, I'm really trying to vote out here for less government, people who are, are siding with the government are not gonna agree. You understand, you understand what I'm saying? So anytime you pick up a cause, by nature, the yin and the yang of the situation, when we talk about the yin and yang and the balance and there's always a, the law of polarity, for every right, there's a left. And for every left, there's a right. For every up, there's a down, inside, outside, black versus white, um, right versus, you know, the, the uh, Republicans versus the different. There's always a, a polarity that happens. So if I stand to, to try to do something of any type of worthy note, it's always going to create opposition against what I'm trying to do. This is life, guys. If you choose to be a basketball player, well, you're probably going to get into it with the baseball players at your school, right? Why? Is it because baseball is better than basketball? No! Fuck no! It's just because we're on this side, so fuck everybody else on the other side, right? So, this is na natural. And so to fight things that are nature bound like that is to really frustrate yourself and get yourself fucking sucked up out here. And so I could choose that. I could shut up. You know what I mean? Like, trust me, no, nothing about my life requires that I come on here and do these lives or requires me to spread my opinions or my ideas or anything like that, or to try to do any of this stuff. Um, I don't have to do that. Um, but I, I want to, I feel like it's going to help tremendous amounts of people. A lot of people have already reached out to me along the way and have told me, dude, you've helped me so much. I went from X, Y, and Z and now I'm at ABC or whatever. And they have grown or changed some way positive in their life. And that's amazing. Should I negate that gift to the world, right? Should I not try to help these people in that way or to give my gifts and my talents to the world out of fear of the people who will disagree or try to tear me down or come after me because of that? Um, my answer is no, right? I don't think so. If we constantly give into our oppositions in this way, uh, we will forever um, do that. We will 
everyone will start to hide their personal gifts and their personal talents. We do this all the time anyways. It doesn't even have to be malicious. Some people don't want to come out here and express themselves because they're afraid of people laughing at them. Right? That's opposition. It's like, I, don't, I think what you're doing is silly, and so I ridicule you for it. Right? That's okay. That's okay. It's okay for other people to look at what you're doing and think that you are fucked up or stupid or dumb or ugly or whatever and make fun of you or oppose you in that way. And I think the best thing we can do is shake the fucking haters off, right? That's the only thing you can do is to shake the haters off. And that's why I said in the title, which was kind of clickbaity given the situation I understand, was that the truth always comes out. And this is, this is the truth, right? So this is why I'm not really afraid of any of this situation because the truth always comes out. So I don't, and same thing, I don't feel like I need to make a big grand stand against any of this or anything because the truth, like I said, there's no foundations to anything. So if you're being a fuck person, right? If you're being a fucked up person and you think right now, oh, I'm getting away with this. No, I see this all the time, dude. I used to, okay, I'm, I'm polyamorous. So this is the, definitely how I ended up in a situation. I was dating two women at the same time. And so you could definitely go after me for that if you'd like to. And I understand, right? Uh, but trust me, everybody's of legal age. So <laughs> more so, more so. We're all in our early, like late 20s. So I'm not even like flirting around with, you know, none of this stuff. So my point is, that's where I was. I was polyamorous and stuff. And I'm open to that. People oppose that. People think that's so fucked up. And where was I going with that? Damn, that was such a good point, too. I wanted to make it. I wanted to make it. It'll come back. Well, I probably won't come back. What were we talking about before I started talking about my actual relationship statuses and stuff? I hate that when you can just come up with an idea, but you're thinking about the thing that you're saying, and then it just completely derails you. But, um, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to get it back, guys. I don't think I'll be able to get back. Long story short, though, I'm, I'm not going to, um, like I said, I'm not going to, oh, the truth always comes out. That's the thing. That's the thing, right? The truth is always exposed. So I don't feel like I have to make this grand stand against this situation and say, oh, well, this is not, if you're doing fuck shit, that's what I said. If you're doing fuck shit out here, the truth's going to come out. Oh, that was, okay. I was polyamorous, right? And then these, yes, yes. Thank you for coming back. Okay. I was poly. I used to talk to other dudes and they would say, Blah, blah, cheated on my wife last weekend, cheated on my wife last year, cheated on my wife all the time, yada, yada, yada. And everybody's like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, cheat on our wives, blah, blah, blah. And then I come and I'm like, well, I just tell the truth. I'm just, you know, I'm an open person. I'm just not really monogamous sometimes. And so uh, I try and let everybody who wants to date me or be in a romantic relationship with me, I'd like them to be on the up and up. I just choose not to lie to their face. So um, some people are monogamous and they choose just not to be like that. And then other people just say, look, I'm just going to tell you like it is so that you can make an honest, educated decision for yourself if you want to be with me or not. You know, and like I'm not going to do it behind your back. Now, they would look at me like I had a fucking dick growing out of my forehead. Like I was just batshit crazy for this. They're like, bro, I don't even know how you do that. This and that, blah, blah, blah. Man, that's weird. And I'm like, it's weird? What? You just said you cheat on your wife all the time. And so I, because I'm open about that, I'm weird. I'm like, look, let me tell y'all something. You can't cheat on somebody and you think, oh, well, because they don't know, I'm choosing a better route, right? And this is what people do. I'm going to do fuck shit. But as long as nobody knows, I'm getting away with it. You don't get away with things out here. <laughs> that does not happen, right? Because you know, you will always know. This is how I talk about when the, the people say God's always watching you and all this and God's always constantly looking at you. Look, there's not no man in the sky, as far as I believe, okay, that is like looking down on you and saying, yep, yep, strike one, strike two. I don't think that. But you do. You know every single thing you've done in your life. You know every situation you've ever been in. And the idea that you can go smash on a bunch of girls like women or whatever, or even kids, like anything. You think you're going to do some fuck shit. You think you're going to steal from people or you're going to manipulate the system in some way and be okay. Like there's no consequences to that is ludicrous, right? You will have to deal with that in your own consciousness, right? In your own subconscious mind, you'll always be nervous and anxious. And the idea that you might get caught is going to fuck you up. And then look, you might not get caught today, right? People might not find out the truth today or tomorrow or next year, or 20 years from now. But I'm gonna tell you what, the history books are full of the truth. 
full of it. 50 years after you die, we might find the truth. You know what I mean? But the truth always going to come out. Always. It always has. It always will. There is no way to hide it. The universe has a way of finding it. And so that's my thing, too. If you're, if you're the best person in the world, the truth's going to come out. It's, people going to know that about you. And they're going to find that about you. That's why I ain't worried. And if, 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 if you some, on some fuck shit, guess what? People going to find out. And the truth's going to come out. And it's going to get you. So for me, I'm not... It is what it is. Like I said, I know what the truth is. I know what I'm, how I'm living my life. And as you do. You know, you know if you're a racist or not. Right? Everybody out here trying to be like, he's a racist, that's a racist, he's a racist, she's a racist. Fine, I'm going to find all the racists. You know. I, I, don't, I don't know if you're being racist. I don't know if, if when you look at me, you're thinking, fuck this motherfucking body, body, body. I don't know. And you just smile at me and you're like, hello, sir, how are you? And then behind in your mind, you're like, oh, I, I hang him with a noose. I don't know. But you do. And you have to sleep with that hate every night. Not me. You got to sleep with that fucking whatever you're doing. You know, and this is the truth. And so I live my life full of integrity for this reason, right? I live my life full of honesty, full of openness, full of, you're never going to see me censor myself. I don't do that. You, you guys see, if anything, I try to be as open with my life as I possibly can with the understanding that it's the only way to live free. Only way to live free is to be as open and honest as you possibly can. That's it, flat out. And so I tell people the truth. I try, even when it hurts me, even when I don't like the idea of telling the truth, I do it anyways because of this. Not for you, not for them, not to prove them wrong or show everybody that I'm the upstanding dude. No, it's for me. So I can sleep with this clear conscience at night. So I can smile. So I don't have to be afraid. You know, dude, it must suck if you, are, if you really do some fuck shit and people start talking about it, what happens? You get really afraid that you're about to get exposed. Well, expose. Expose me, please. Right? Expose me for what I am, which is the truth. Right? I'm just doing nothing but... Whoa. <laughs> I am not the truth. But expose the, the truth that I'm talking, right? Expose it, because it's truth. It's the truth. My life is truth. I live that. So if you are being a good person with good intentions and good motivations, right? If you were trying, and good's obviously a relative term, isn't it? But if you feel like you're trying to do the right thing and people are disagreeing with you, well, that's bound to happen, right? But you gotta stand in your truth, right? And if your truth is fucked, we're gonna find out and you're gonna fucking pay for it, right? Period, right? Where's Jeff Epstein right now? Paying for his shit, right? Might have taken us 20 years to figure it out or whatever, but we figured it the fuck out and now you're dead. You, you know what I mean? Like, the truth gonna come out. Every politician right now who's running for office, all their truths are coming out. Or lack thereof, or whatever, right? But that's why a lot of them are still operating. We don't know yet, but hey, we gonna find out, right? We go like, when the, when the chips settle, everybody's gonna know the truth. So, I just try to understand that. But know that you're always gonna face opposition. You know, the truth, again, we just talked about is relative it's relative you know and so other people will always try to say well he's lying or she's lying or there's the enemy that's the enemy trying to call out these corruptions and that's always bound to happen to you eventually and when it happens to you all you can do is just say look the truth will speak for itself i'm going to, i am me like i you know whatever if you're doing good then we're gonna know right? Spirit, like real, recognize real. That's the word, right? Real, recognize real. So people who know, go know. People who don't, they, hey, they probably ain't real ones. So it doesn't, you know what I mean? It's whatever. Understand that you're going to have to live under a certain level of opposition to your ideas. It's the only way to live free and independent, right? It's to understand that like, this is my truth. I am living my truth. Whatever your truth may be, right? Whatever your, dude, my kid, shout out my kid, I'm a transgender person, period. Doesn't matter if I'm 10. Doesn't matter if you think it's okay or not. It, uh, this is me. I don't see it. I don't see that. Okay? I, I'm not, right? I don't see, but she sees it in herself with a level of conviction that I cannot argue with. I cannot, to the point where now, when I look at my child, I see a girl. I just see a girl. I don't even, I can't even imagine her as a, like a, a dude. She doesn't express a dude energy. She's living from her 100% truth, whether or not everybody else, you know, but real one's going to recognize. I recognize her truth. I see it in her. 
You know, and just like you guys will see, everybody will see, when you see truth in somebody, you'll see it. And it, it is what it is. So don't be afraid. <laughs> if I can just leave, I think Brandy was saying some awesome stuff. I'm going to come back and read the comments here in a second. But I'm just going to say this to you. I want to be the example here in this sense. Don't be afraid. Okay. Don't be afraid. If you don't have anything to fear, then you have nothing to fear. Right. If, you, if you're trying your best and you're doing the best you can, not saying you won't make mistakes. I'm not saying you can fuck some shit up because I have fucked some shit up. That's one thing I had to admit in my story. I said, look, there's, I can see how ways in this situation you might think that I was fucked up. Yo, there's times in my life that I have been fucked up. I have, I have fuck, we've all done fuck shit in our life, right? But I have never, with a malicious intent, came out here and tried to prey on somebody or ruin somebody or hurt somebody. And I, I fully never intend to do such things. So the point is, you can't prove intention. Or, I mean, you can't, but, you know, let, let the chips fall where they're going to fall, right? You just do your best to be good. And that intention, that truth of the matter will come out. And so don't be afraid, right? That's all I can say to you. It's like, live your truths, whether people are going to agree or not. Like I said, a lot of people didn't agree with me when I told her I was poly. My mom did not agree with my lifestyle. A lot of people thought that I was on some fuck shit. I get it, right? But I wasn't. So it is what it is, right? Same thing situation here. I'm sure that her and her group of friends or whoever think I'm on some fuck shit. And that's fine. I understand. But my gang knows I'm not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like my life knows that I'm not. My wife, my child, my family, everybody and everything that I love and care about in this world does not believe any of this fuck shit. And, you know, if I let this cause me turmoil, if I let this knock me off my mission, right? If I were to retreat from this situation and say, okay, well, now I got to fold up because people out here are going to think X, Y, Z about me or, or try and do X, Y, Z, um, then you're letting your opposition win, right? Essentially, that's exactly what they want to see happen. They want to tear you down and only you can let that happen flat out, you know? So, so no. And uh, like I said, the truth will always come out. So try to live. That's the second point I wanted to make in this. Try to live as open and honest as possible, guys. Um, sometimes people are going to wrongly accuse you like there's plenty of people who went to jail for nothing they did wrong or whatever right but if, if you're speaking the truth um it's going to come out nelson mandela for example was persecuted for 20 years as a criminal as a bad person but all the real ones knew everyone's like yo get nelson mandela out of there this man did nothing wrong so look don't be afraid of people who are going to try to use these tactics against you. Um, live your truth, man. Live your truth. Even if it's, even, dude, even if you, I've been telling people, you're a racist. Okay, well, you're a racist. It is what it is. You're either going to stop or you're not, right? And look, I can't tell you, I, I can tell you all day long that I think you're fucked up. But look, I'm your opposition, right? Which is fine. That's fine. You want to be a racist? I bet you find a bunch of other racist fucks out here who think you're the GOAT. You know, they're going to, oh, grandmaster, so-and-so, you're so great. Come around me. I'm your fucking opposition. Flat out, right? So it's like, we all going to have it regardless of what situations we pick up. You know, dude, some of these people, Michael Jordan, I was just talking about him the other day. What a fucking saint on this world. It's best black Jesus. You know, you don't talk shit to black Jesus, he said. That's hilarious. But so many people are like, yo, the dude was X, Y, Z or yada, yada, yada. That's what happens. That's what happens. You know, if you try and be great, people who don't want to be great are, are going to try and pull you back down to their level. And that's that's up to you to fight against. Um, one more thing I wanted to. I think I, I think I mean, I guess I can't really remember what else I was going to say about it. But I mean, that's where I'm at with it. You know, like I said, I don't. It's. Oh, oh, OK. That's what I wanted to say. That's what I wanted to say. I'm glad I remembered it. Okay. This is the, this, if, if honest, this is the most important thing I can say. And this is directly pointed at anybody who thinks that this is a healthy course of action in life to constantly try to look at other people out here and, and criticize them or tear them down or ridicule them or to do the, the opposite of what I said. Like, right. I just gave you guys tons of like, spiritual kind of ideas and philosophies that you could stand up against this oppression but what if you are the oppressor right what if people out here who are really trying to do that or they're scanning the internet day and night trying to find all the people who are fucked up in the political system trying to find out all the people out here who are doing wrong or doing dirt or doing bad and and trying to expose everybody for all their corruptions and this and that and here's my advice to you why don't you expose your own corruptions why don't you look within 
inside yourself and expose your own corruptions. Because that's the thing about it. That's what's so enticing about trying to find the evil in everybody else. Because let me tell you something. There's evil in everybody else. There's evil in you too. And it's the evil in you that you're afraid of. And so to make yourself feel better about your own evil inside yourself, you try to bring all this evil out in everybody else. Right? Now, why is that a bad thing? Right? Because you're exposing evil and that's supposed to be good, right? Because you're not always exposing evil. Sometimes you're making up evil so that you can, what again, negate your own evils inside. This dude's so bad. X, Y, Z is so bad. That's why I'm a good person today. No, what so-and-so did has zero to do with you, period. Whether they did it good, fucked up or not. Because Hitler was the worst person of all time doesn't make you a good person, right? You could still be as equally as fucked as Hitler and point the finger at Hitler. We, we can all do that. We can all sit back and pretty sure so-and-so is eating babies. Can't prove it, but I just feel it. Feel it deep in my bones. So-and-so over there must be racist. He didn't say anything about Black Lives Matter. Yep. Let's see if we can expose them further. Why don't you look within yourself and look at your own racist tendencies or your own lack of whatever? anything you fucking spit on so-and-so you didn't give any money right I, I if if all the world i think if every single person in the world looked within themselves to eradicate their own evil how fast do you think we could eradicate evil like overnight overnight but instead if we try to look to other people and compare ourselves to them to make ourselves feel either more superior or even inferior, um, how is that helping anything or anybody? Because again, like I told you, you don't know my truth, right? You can speculate and you can take all, you can try to expose and do all this stuff, but you don't know. And so you can spend all your, you can spend your whole life trying to expose some fuck sh fake shit, right? And never make the changes within your own life that you could have actually had some type of influence over. And this is what we see out of, out of cancel culture, is rather than me standing up and, and promoting equality, I'll try to tear down everybody and everything that I think is, in, is promoting inequality, right? Two ways to have the tallest building in town, right? Everybody's heard this, two ways to have the tallest building in town. You could build the tallest building, or you could tear all the other buildings down. It doesn't matter. You have a little two-story building, but as long as everybody else is flat and level, you're the big dog on campus. You're right. So it's, it's a scapegoat. It's a something that we, a lot of us do. All, all of us do it. All of us do it. Wow. My, dude, I have family. They be watching like 90 Day Fiance and shit. And I'm watching all these ridiculous reality shows. Why do we love that stuff? I even taught, started this live. Why are we all attracted to drama? Why do you like those shows? Because if you look at those shows, you say, man, at least my life's not like that. Oh, well, you know, at least I'm not fucking doing that fucking shit. So I'm, I must be doing... You ain't doing shit either. You ain't no better than those people or worse or nothing. So the idea that you watching a bunch of people who are different from you and then you say, well, I'm better because I'm not different in that way. It's, it's not better. You're just different. Okay? You're just different. And so that is what it is. So for me, I think that that ends up being escape and it, and it, and it, and it holds us from the true work of, that we could all do to make this world a better place. And that's to, to fix yourself, right? Get rich, please. For the love of God, get rich. Stop talking shit on all the other rich people. Get rich, why? Well, if they're so fucking corrupt, then maybe people who are good should try and get rich so they can be the rich whatever. And then instead of oppressing everybody, you save everybody, you liberate the people you do something for the community but instead we don't we sit back and say i'll never be rich fuck those guys those guys must be corrupt they're fucking it up why because i can't get rich so they must be do you know and it's not the case it's not dude and and i, I, I couldn't have <laughs> the the universe fascinates me so much man because i didn't see all this stuff until i started my morning rants and, and i was like wow so funny that I was just kind of thinking about this stuff. You got to stop comparing ourselves to other people, good or bad. You look at somebody else and you say, well, at least I'm not Trump. So I'm a good guy today. You are Trump. You are Trump. Given the right circumstances, given the right background, given the right whatever, you, you make the same decisions as that person does. 
right? But you don't have any of that. You didn't, you didn't grow up like they did. You're not from the same place they did. You don't have the same experiences. So trying to make that comparison is fucking ludicrous. You're not that person. So of course you don't act like that person or do the things like that person or think that that person's right or wrong or nothing, right? But you yourself are yourself. You know the fuck shit you were doing before in the past, right? Like if there's one thing I can be honest, I was verbally abusive. I was very manipulative as a child, right? As like 17, 18, obviously I talk well, right? Obviously I am a great influencer and I didn't always use that for the best of, the, of intentions, right? Sometimes I was manipulating everybody else in my life to feed my own ego, right? To make me look cool or make me be like the hot shot dude, you know? And, and, and as a defense mechanism, because again, you know, it's like rather than using that influence to influence myself to be better, I was trying to influence everybody around me to think that I was awesome, right? And if anybody tried to negate my awesomeness, I would try and manipulate them in some way to let, to let me do what I wanted to do, right? So if my mom wouldn't let me go out to a party, then I was going to use my levels of influence so that I could go to the party, whether I should have been at the party or not or anything. I was always going to try and find a way to just do what I wanted to do regardless, right? And so that was a, that was a, bad thing, right? That was a bad part of me. You, now look, I could look at everybody else in the world and say, well, you know what? At least I didn't use it to do that. Well, at least I didn't convince everybody to create a nationalist party and, and extinguish the Jews. So, I'm, I mean, I'm a good person. No, I'm not. I was a tyrant in my family. You know what I mean? People were just terrified of me because I was a savage. And, and dude, if, look how good I can use my words to uplift people. Imagine if I was using my words to tear you down. It's, it's, it's bad. It's bad. That's why I understand Michael Jordan. Dude, I could ridicule some people till they cry. Honestly. Honestly. I could, I could destroy you with this tongue. It's sharp. I had to grow out of that. I had to look within myself and say, this is a, a low self. You know what I mean? This is you living so egoic and trying to, you know, tear everybody else down so that you could feel like you're somehow strong or powerful. And that's ridiculous. Why don't you try and build everybody else up? Miraculous. Why don't you build yourself up, Rod? Miraculous. It was miraculous. I said, rather right, right, instead of trying to influence everybody to just let me be a piece of shit, why don't I influence myself to be better? And so I did that. You know, I looked with it. And that has changed everything about my life. My relationships, my, all these things, right? All these things that I robbed the planner came from me looking within myself to see how I can be better how I can overcome my own egoic faults, right? My own needs for all these things that fuck people up out here. All that stuff, right? The need for instant gratification. The need for people to think I'm cool. The need for, you know, like, like all these things that we do, we hurt people and we hold people down. Why? So you can feel powerful and cool. You're not cool. Stop it. That's not supposed to thing, right? So... But if I, if I constantly try to compare myself to others, um, I'll tell you one thing. Not only would it happen in this morality thing, I would also not be as great as I want to be or am. I look at my, I was just talking to my wife a couple of days ago about my military career and stuff. And, and I was actually the bomb in the military. I was like soldier of the year. And, I, and I've always uh, uh, achieved at a very high level. Um, but that always became from the fact that I was not comparing myself to other people. If I only did what everybody else was doing, I would have been mediocre and average just like everybody else because I would have done just what's good enough but I didn't think about that I was like what's the best that I can do like what's the best that I can do and then I would do that and then the next day I would say how can I be better than that then because obviously this is as good as I can be so let me try and beat myself right and so it it was always about me trying to internally look at myself and say what can I do better and what can I do differently or whatever and how can I set a standard that is achievable to me, not everybody else. Like I said, I look at so-and-so and so-and-so, and so, the standard was to make E6 in 10 years. That's usually how it goes. And so I could have looked at that and said, okay, well, that's pretty much where I'll be then. I'll, when about 10 year mark, I'll look to make E6 and all this and, and that'll be the, I said, fuck that. How fast can you, Rod, as a person, make E6? How fast can you do that? And I was on track to do six and six, which is like, a promotion a year, which is pretty much insane. Uh, it's about as fast as anybody could ever hope to get promoted, right? So, but that came from not looking at the rest of those fucks in my unit because the rest of them weren't about any of that shit. 
They were about chilling, partying, doing the bare minimum. Just get through PT. Just, I'm, I'm trying to ace the PT score. The rest of these cats are just trying to just get it done. Just be done with it. So excellence, real, not even excellence, real change, okay? Real effectiveness. Let's not even call it excellence. Let's call it effectiveness. Comes from self-evaluation. Looking within your own self. Eradicating your own evils. Yes, there's plenty of evil in the world, and always will be. You, the idea that you, me, any of us are going to expose the evil of seven billion people on the planet is insane. That's insane. It's narcissistic. It's 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 ludicrous to, to even think that you're going to do that. But you could do it in your own life. You could fix yourself today, today, <laughs> right now. You could look inside yourself and say, you know what? I drink too much. I gotta put that down. You know what? I'm not being a good dad. I could be a better. I could be a better father. You know, or whatever. You know what? I am stealing from my church. I should probably stop doing that. What? Because you're doing something. I don't give a fuck. You're. All, we're all doing something, right? You're stealing, or you're, I even admit it to my my. I've broken the law plenty of times because the law is not moral. You know what I mean? Like, the, the law has no idea of ethics or morals or any of that shit. As we can see, right? As we have seen with our own two eyes, it has nothing to do with morality. So, I bra- I've broken the law plenty of times. But I'll tell you this much. Everything that I've ever done in my life, obviously, because I told you, I can sleep with it at night. Right? I'm okay with it. I've either made peace with it, I've overcome it, I've changed, I've somehow rectified the situation, or I think it's an okay situation to be in. So some people look at me and they say, you're too competitive. You're too um, aggressive. You're too, you grind too much. You work too much. You, you, blah, blah, you go too hard. That, that, you could look at that and say that, and I understand. I, I, again, I won't argue with your perception. But when I lay home at night in my own bed and I close my own eyes, I am proud of the work that I'm putting in. I'm proud of the standards that I'm setting for myself. I'm proud of all the things that I'm doing for myself. And I ask anybody else to look at themselves and can you say the same thing? Can you say with what I'm doing, I'm proud of myself? Well, if you can say that, then you, my friend, are living a happy and successful life and you should continue. So I'll give you a round of applause. But if you can't, then fucking fix that shit. Get to it, right? Do the work. Be the hero. But the hero is not about trying to expose everything and everybody else. You don't need to. It'll, they'll expose themselves. <laughs> As we talked about, the truth always comes out. So the idea that you've got to come out here and pick and fight, and they, people do it to themselves. You will expose yourself. If you are fu- on some fuck shit, we're going to know. We're going to know. Flat out. And so that's where I'm at with it today, guys. You know, that's where I'm at with it today. Um, it's really a shame to see, uh, but not just for myself. Like I said, it's always a shame to see, you know. Um, dude, I mean, like I said, this is why I love, we have a court of law. You know, it's like, yo, prove it. Prove it. Prove these things. If you're going to prove it, prove it. But if you're not, man, just focus on yourself. Fucking uh, fix your own injustices. Because that's the truth of the matter, right, is... Somebody said this, hurt people, hurt people. Um, that's, that's 100% true. But all the injustice of the world is done by somebody. Somebody like yourself. Somebody like me. I've thought about this plenty of times. I am, dude, what, if, what if I would have stayed that manipulative, egoic, um, lesser self person? You know? What if I would have stayed that? Um, I might have became Hitler. I might have really grown up to be the worst of worst. You know, because I was oppressing my own family and my own little tribe. I can only imagine if, if I was given power or money or something like that, what, what kind of... I could have unleashed hell on us, honestly. I, talk, I think about this all the time. I'm like, dude, I could have I fucked some shit up. With great power comes what? Great responsibility. Personal responsibility. Not responsibility to police the world. Not responsibility to come and try and figure out if your friends over there are racist or not racist, is to check your own personal racism, right? When you see me on my podcast, I talked about my own racist tendencies when I was in Afghanistan and Iraq, right? I'm not out here trying to condemn everybody else for their racism. Why? Because I was a racist. I was sitting there talking about, 
I'm afraid of these people based on their skin color. And I had my own justifications for the situation, of course, right? They were trying to kill me or people like them were trying to kill me. And so, of course, you know, I was on guard for all the people who might be trying to kill me. But that, if I would have ran with that forever, think about the types of oppression that I could cause on people, right? I'm sitting here talking about, well, I don't want Muslims in my country. Well, why don't you want Muslims in your country? Well, because they're terrorists. You know, oh, they tried to kill me. If that, that, that could have been me. And then I might have became president one day. And I might be sitting around talking about, yo, we should not let Muslims in my country because uh, they might try and kill me or some shit. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's yourself. It's you. <laughs> it, uh, I, I, people have a hard time with this, but heaven and hell are within you. You are both the God and the devil. You, it just depends on which one you're going to fucking express out here in the world. But it's you. Like, you are all the evils of the world. Like I said, I take you. And this experiment has been done plenty of times. I take you, and I tweak a little bit of things about you, and I put you in the wrong circumstances or some situation, and you're going to murk somebody. I could, I could put you in a situation where you would probably kill somebody. You know? It's, your own, you're just as bad as these people. So if you want to fix this in the world, fix yourself. And that's one less person we have to worry about out here. That's one less fucking homophobe, racist, pedophile, rich oppressor, billionaire fucking fuck fuck boy, whatever. If you fix yourself, that's one less we all have to deal with, right? And it's effective. It's just effective. So I leave you with that, guys. I leave you with that. Um, not that I said, I, I, I truly believe this. Don't stand by and watch corruption happen in your face. But don't feel like you have to come out here and try to find it all. This is what's the problem with the cops. Right? Look, if you stumble up on some fuck shit, stop it. But the problem is y'all out here like, any fuck shit going on over here? What about over there? Hey, come here, you. Let me see. Are you into some fuck shit? Let me see your ID. Uh, no, get up on here on the counter. You look like you're you look like you into some fuck shit. Let me frisk you. Let me, you know, it's like, mind your own motherfucking business. Mind your own business, Karen. <laughs> For real, you do some fuck shit, figure it out. And so that's where I'm at with it today. Um, I'm not going to sit here and go on. I mean, I'm never going to talk about this again. I just think that it's, like I said, it doesn't require my time. It doesn't require energy. I'm not, I don't want to talk shit on these people. I don't, it is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. You guys have heard me say this time and time again. Uh, it, I'm getting it tattooed on my arm somewhere. Um, for the things you can do, for the things that you can control, for the things that you can help or be better in some way, if you can really come out here and you can make a physical change in something, you know, in your own mindset, and you can start a foundation, or if you're really going to take it up as a cause or something, whatever, do what you can. But everything else, it just is what it is. So if people want to come out here and they want to say fuck shit about me, if they want to laugh at me, if they want to um, tear me down or try and act like I'm a bad person or any of that stuff. If you think it's wrong for me to be poly or you don't think my mom and dad should have gotten married because one's black and one's white or you don't think I should be wealthy because I didn't say the thing that you wanted me to say or what? I don't give a fuck, okay? I don't give a fuck. Look, it is what it is. I can't control you motherfuckers. I can't. And I'm not going to try to. I'm not going to waste my energy here on this planet trying to control everybody else's free speech. I'll control what I say. I'll control what I do. If I fuck up, yo, I'm going to own it up and I'm going to say I fucked up. And if I didn't, you can kiss my ass. So it is what it is. Uh, I love you guys. I want to catch up on some of these comments because, you know, I was ranting. But I did hear you guys were making some, some distinctions. And if you guys got anything to add, please throw it in here. It's hard for people to understand something different than what, they, yes, what they're used to. Um, unfamiliarity breeds fear. I've talked about this plenty of time. If you don't understand something, you're 100% going to be afraid of it. This human, human beings, right? Why are you afraid of the dark? Or why are humans afraid of the dark? Because you don't know. You don't know what's going to come out of that. You don't know if it's just going to be like a fucking mountain lion just comes barreling on your camp one day. And so you want to you want to build a campfire. You want to be able to see the threats that are going to come at you because that makes you feel safer. You feel like you can react to something like that. So you're absolutely right. Things that we don't understand or that we we aren't used to or that is different in some way it tends to breed fear in us and then what do we do when we're afraid? We feel like we have to oppose that. Now I got to kill kill the beast. You know why? Because the beast might kill us. And you know, so you go after it. And so you definitely got to try and check your own internal fear 100%, girl. Um, 
And then, yep, right, Randy? I think the way you're handling it says a lot about the kind of person you are when you got nothing to hide. Yeah, uh, I absolutely agree with that. And, and I try to do it on purpose. Like I said, I wanted, I, some people reached out to me and I appreciate you guys, you know, checking on me and just, uh, and I said, look, I'm gonna handle this with grace and dignity like I always do, you know, flat out. Like, if, if I burn for this, you know what I mean? Like, if I get canceled or if it all comes tumbling, it all my 2,000 followers, you know what I mean, whatever, but if, if everybody comes out, these 250 people that fuck with me, and they're like, yo, he's a bad person, so be it, it is what it is, I can't, like I said, I can't control that, you know, you guys are gonna think, or do, or believe, whatever you want to believe, um, so that's up to you, but um, I try and just, what I don't, what I don't want to do, because it's about me, and controlling myself, I don't want to do the same thing, I hope that I could show compassion to the people who are trying to tear me down, you know what I mean, like, rather than be just as bad as somebody who's trying to tear me down and tear them down or, or you know what I mean? If somebody tries to fight you, I, tell, I, I say this often. Um, this is the, it's just so funny. Like, I'm pacifist by nature. So much so that I say all the time that I'll die. But the other day, my mom was like, yeah, me and your pappy, we got to get a gun, man. We got to, it's getting crazy out here. And I was like, it's just not worth all that to me. Uh, I would rather, like, if I ever get put in a position where it's like, oh, kill or be killed. I'm getting murked, you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just getting murked. I would rather just die than have to live the rest of my life knowing I had to murk somebody, you know what I mean? Like, the PTSD of seeing that face and, and somebody's brains getting blown out every time I close my eyes and try and go to sleep, it's just too much, you know? I'd rather just not deal with that pressure. And I'm just, you know, and that's just me, that's, that's how I feel about it. It's like, because I can only control what I do. So I can't control if you try and shoot me in the head. I can't stop that, but I cannot shoot you in the head. And so that's what I try to do. I try to just be one less person out here trying to shoot somebody in the head. Um, oh, I, yeah, thank you. I um, I can't see the ego in me has really, I like to talk about my relationship with my daughter. And, and really, if you guys see me talk, I'm trying to talk a lot about normalizing the conversation around transgender and, and LGBTQ stuff. Um, some people are asking if I was gay or whatever. I mean, I'm not, but... Uh, I got love for everybody and I understand, you know, I just get it. You know, I get it. It doesn't, it doesn't, I don't care. I just don't give a shit. And so, but I, all of a sudden I had a transgender daughter. And so I was like, okay, well I should probably figure this shit out. And, and I mean, it's just like, now it's my team, right? Cause that's what I had to, I had to ask myself, am I going to stand in opposition of my daughter or am I going to join her team? You know what I mean? And I'm like, well, this is my kid, so I'm 100% joining her team. <laughs> like that means I have to oppose all the motherfuckers out here who are against LGBTQ and transgender and all that, then so be it. Then so fucking be it. And if you think I'm a queer or weirdo because I'm standing up for transgender, well, so fucking be it. You know, that's the way it is. But I'm going to join my girl's team. So that's the way it is. Um, we got to do the hard work to heal ourselves. Man, Brandy, you're on today. You're on. A, B, appreciate you coming back and, and shouting out responsibility, personal responsibility. Look, even, even responsibility for the other people around you, I, I believe in that stuff. The more responsibility you can take on, the better. And that, that's not the words of wisdom that we're seeing today in, in our day and age. It's more so um, blame these people, blame those people. Um, it's, it's their fault. It's his fault. It's them's fault. It's those people over there's fault. Everybody's fault but my own. Um, and that's why most people stay stuck because all those people you're blaming don't actually give a fuck about you and what's going on with you. Um, really, that's your job. You should care about you and what's going on with you. Same thing I told you about like, you know, we just talk about most people are going to make fun of you. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to try and oppress you. They're going to oppose you or whatever, whatever. Um, some people will support you and stuff. But even then, you try and depend on those people's support and then they'll let you down. Right? It's like you. It's your life. This is your time. Life is a bucket of time. This is your time. You do what you want with that. You know, that's it. And, and if you want to use your time to sit around and call yourself oppressed, well, then by all means, you do that. But... Those people that you're shouting out and saying, oh, he's the oppressor, and she, they don't care. And your time is still... <sighs> so, that's up to you. Um, but I, I found me personally, my life has changed dramatically. And just, I mean, I love my life so much. And that's come from me taking control of my life or taking responsibility of my life. My own character. My own financial situation. My own body. <laughs> right? Like, I, it's me. It's me. And, and, and it's you too. You guys have the power, though. That's the reason people shy away from responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. So if you don't feel like you have great power, then what do you not want? Great responsibility. <laughs> You're like, fuck no, dude, I can't handle this shit. I can barely handle myself, dog. Like, 
jeez, you know, you're over here with your problems trying to come on. Like, dog, I got my own problems. Stay over there. And that's what most people are like, right? Um, but the more you can take that on and say, you know what? Um, let me fix all my problems so I can help you with your problems. You know, so I, now I can be open to helping you or do something for you or whatever. So faith is the most valuable way of life. Okay, so faith is the most valuable way of life. I agree with that one. I just don't even, I really, I, anybody who tries to negate the, the power of belief, I just laugh. I just laugh. I'm like, you're, you're kidding yourself. You're tricking yourself, bro. Like you have faith that you're going to wake up tomorrow. You don't know that. You don't know that. You hope that. You wish that. You think that. But the truth is, you don't know you're going to wake up tomorrow. But you live your life like you are. You live your life every day like there's another day. <laughs> we all do. Oh, I got tomorrow. Then there'll be tomorrow. And then there'll be tomorrow. And so one day there's not. And you're like, what? What happened? What? You know, trust me. You live in your life with faith. Whether you consciously do it or don't. You know? See, the person who doesn't consciously do it is afraid. Right? Because internally they don't know. They, they honestly know they don't know if tomorrow is going to be a reality. You don't know if this person is going to shoot you in the face or not. Um, and so if you don't have faith, then you have fear of the unknown. <laughs> but if you have faith, then you kind of instinctually know it's all good. You know what I mean? It's all good. It's all good. If I get shot in the face, it's cool. It's cool. It's whatever. Life goes on. Maybe not for you, but life goes on. <laughs> All right, this is really everything I needed to hear. Yeah, I'm glad. Man, I always love that. Thank you guys for everybody who's been shouting out and showing love and support. That's why you guys make it easy to shuck off any haters or shuck off any people. Like the, the, the stacks and stacks of DMs, not stacks, but the stacks I'm starting to stack up of DMs of people being like, yo, I appreciate you and you've really helped me and this and that. I think um, negate all the things that people can look at me and say, well, you fucked me up for this, you know? Um, I think that's true. You know, like I said, I was manipulative. I have not always been the most um, endearing person or understanding person or a patient person. And so um, I know that I've hurt people along the way in that, in that and especially emotionally. Um, and and I have to bear that burden like we all do when we hurt people. And um, and so I do. I, I'm, I'm saddened by that. I don't regret it, but I am saddened by the fact that, um, you know, it, it, it had to be that way. But Ultimately, I take pride in knowing that I've helped far more than I've hurt, you know, and that was because um, I helped myself first, you know what I mean? I, I fixed my hurt, like, like what's the name said, I fixed my own hurt and my own pains and my own life so that I would not replicate those or put those out into the world. And so um, I'm proud of that. <laughs> I'm proud of it. Uh, I love you too, fam. I am gay. I'm absolutely gay. I love life. I love you. I love everybody. You know, I do. I truly, truly love everyone. Um, that's just, that's the truth of the matter. You know, and of course, you guys know love isn't always sexual. You know, it's not like that. I, I just, I have tremendous love in my heart for everybody. When I say that, when I say I love you so much, or I love everybody so much, why am I saying that? Well, because of what we talked about earlier. I instinctually understand that we're all the same. You guys are me. I'm you, right? Like, and he's like, that's why I try not to transgress against you. That's somebody else transgressing against me, right? If I fucking rob you today, that's somebody else robbing me tomorrow. And, uh, you know, if I love you today, that's somebody else out in the world loving me tomorrow or loving somebody else tomorrow. Or, you know, I love you and then maybe that love sparks your love for some. But it's like, you are me. Just with a different set of circumstances and a different mindset and a different, like, upbringing or whatever but the rappers all the same we're all energy and it's it's when you really understand that law of divine oneness that everything is everything you know that none of us would exist without each other and n like each drop of water makes the ocean every single drop of water makes the ocean if you take one away then you got to take the next one away and if you take the next one away you got to take the next thousand away and if you take the next valley you got to take the next trillion and next thing you know there's no fucking ocean because it's all gone because it all breaks down to itty bitty little water molecules so um to love you really just says i love myself and i love myself so much that i love all of you as well and uh, i try to put more of that into the world and that's what i want to encourage you is i have to leave now to put more of what you want in the world right more of what you want to see if you want to see more love if you want to see more understanding you want to see more patience you want to have more faith you want other people to smile more if you want all these things you want things to be great you want more people to have more money you want people to be not so whatever you want to see happen in the world 
Go make it. Go give it to the world. Right? That's how we get it, is if you give it to us. All right, we love you.